There are superheroes in every industry, regardless of physical ability. From Helen Keller to Franklin D. Roosevelt, who in 1921 contracted a paralytic illness believed at the time to be polio, and his legs became permanently paralyzed. Many years later, new legends emerged, like Australia's Ellie Cole in the Paralympics for the women's 100 meter freestyle, as well as Johnny Peacock and also uh, Oscar Pistorius, who hold world records for the men's 100 meter sprint and inspire a new generation of handy capable badasses. And then there's the music industry. Les Paul, I don't know if you know this, uh, creator of the Gibson Les Paul guitar in 1948 shattered his arm and his elbow. And doctors told him they would not be able to repair his elbow. So they set his arm in a permanent permanent unmovable position under 90 degrees so he'd be able to cradle and play his guitar. Les Paul was involved in the creation of one of the world's most popular guitars, the Gibson Les Paul. But not many people in the biz are Grammy winners, uh, like Eric Hawk, who also happened to be paraplegic. And he's a hero that's advocating for handy capable people all over the world. Unfortunately, disability hate crimes have been at an all time record high globally over the last few years, and it's time to get involved on a different level. Grammy winning guitar hero, Eric Hawk of Portugal the Man suffered an accident 10 years ago that's left him paraplegic. He's sharing his incredible story with us today. I'm not getting emotional. <laughs> Advocacy for people with disabilities, ending the stigma, and his rock and roll journey. Live from Seattle, raising money for United Spinal, please welcome Eric Hawk of Portugal the Man. Hi guys. We did it. We did it! <laughs> How's it going, dude? I mean, I'm chilling. I'm really excited about the show today because you know, we met a few years ago, even though I had known other members of the band and your energy was electric. And I'm really glad we kept in touch because I just think you're swell. Well, I'm just happy to be here talking to you. <laughs> I had to uh, I had to scroll through a lot of live feeds in the Instagram because I think everyone is uh, going out of their head and just wanting to be live all the time. But I found it. <laughs> so true. I think when all of this started, we didn't know how to connect. That's part of why I started quarantine, but cute. And I'm a talker anyway, as you know, but yep. this was like next level. And I was like, I've got to, you know, get everybody on the line. We've got to stay together and stay positive. So totally. you know, totally. I totally. Yeah. lost my shit and created this show. And I'm so happy because I get to advocate for amazing causes and i'm really happy to be raising money today for united spinal association and i know that you work with them so i wanted to talk about a little bit of your advocacy for people with disabilities and handy capable people all over the world and just the the craziness that people deal with on a daily basis regardless of wealth or status and and uh you have a crazy story you're going to tell me about backstage so let's just get right into it so 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 many of the things all the time yeah <laughs> um it's 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 pretty wild it's it's like a huge leveling kind of play field when uh you uh you're you're used to sort of uh appreciating a certain level of comfort and status throughout the world as being you know like a, a member of a renowned band and and traveling around but then you know you go into a post office and uh, someone won't even look you in the eyes. It's 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 really wild, um, but uh, I just really appreciate you being here, and uh, I appreciate you doing this show and giving me uh, a little bit of time and platform. Absolutely, I I mean I think I'm really excited to hear what happened because I think it's one of those things people that don't have disabilities when they see someone with a disability everyone wants to ask, but they don't want to ask. You know yeah. what I mean? And I feel like, and I am only speaking from my outside view, I feel like that's what sort of makes things uncomfortable right at the get is how do I interact with this person? And you can correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't understand their journey. So ending this stigma of such difference is so important because some people are born that way. Some people have accidents. You know, it's all so, there's billions of stories, right? So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the the feeling of 
normalcy and then the abnormal moments. Well, it's, it's really fun because you don't really get that differentiation with kids. Uh, like, oh, yeah. uh, you know, a, a six-year-old boy can come up to me in a grocery store and just be completely cavalier and frank and ask me, you know, <laughs> specifically what's wrong with my legs. <laughs> and I'm right. totally honest with him. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll get into it. Um, it's, it's when adults try and act, uh, it's like they're coming, uh, to curiosity from a place of compassion that yeah. can get frustrating to the, to, to the disability community. Um, because like it, it's great that you care about what happened to me and that you have curiosity, but don't come to it from a place of dishonesty. <laughs> Just ask, ask me what's up. So when you say that, how, how has someone approached you? Like, what's an example of that? So people who aren't disabled can kind of get on that headspace and go, okay, wait, maybe I am doing that. So I, I, I had a I had a Mormon missionary follow me around throughout a, a, a grocery store, just asking at every shelf that I paused at if he could grab something for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and like, and <laughs> This was this was a handful of years ago uh, when I was going through kind of a, a, a dark, weird, non-touring time. So I was in a 7-Eleven uh, buying glazed donuts, uh, a pack of American spirits, uh, a bottle of champagne, <laughs> and like toilet paper. And what? basically like hey! I got to the very end and he just like kept following me and I was like doing my shopping like extra quickly just to kind of like get away from this guy if I could. And uh, <laughs> then he, he, you know, like, he basically met me at the door oh, after I had checked out. And he said to me, like, hey, I just want you to know that uh, you're doing great. Oh, God. And I, like, I looked down in this bounty of misery that I had just purchased. And I'm like, dude, no. <laughs> like, you wouldn't say that to anyone else that was buying these items. Like, oh. you know, like it's, this is your own personal weird inspiration porn and uh yeah, yeah. I'm, it, I'm, I'm not doing great in this moment but thanks thanks for being here it's cringeworthy because i feel like humans innately want to do good and help people right but it, it's about the awareness of not feeling sorry for someone but understanding their story am i right and well uh, yeah absolutely and i think like Right now, um, we're seeing more than ever that this country is in a crisis of a lack of empathy and altruism. Yeah. Um, so I do think that compassion is something that's uh, being demonstrated to us again and again, that it's in kind of short supply on the broad scale. Right. Um, so I do, I do want people to care. I do, I do want people to genu genuinely care about people. But um, uh, when, it, when it comes from a place where it's like, they're just kind of making themselves feel better by thinking that they're helping someone out. It's a uh, right. it tricky. So let's talk about what happened. Cause I didn't look it up when I met you. I didn't ask. I'm always curious. I'm also <laughs> dedicating this show to my friend, Maya, who was unfortunately shot back in Nashville a few years ago and paralyzed. So she was, she walked her whole life and then she was brutally attacked. Uh, with many other people. Her husband is in the music industry as well, and they raised a lot of money for her therapies, and she's fighting hard to walk again every day, but right now she's in a wheelchair. So this is for her. Without her, I would not have met Portugal the man um, and then eventually met you. Uh, thank you for the donations. I see the donations coming in. So um, I would, yeah, please, any money, even a dollar, you guys, it's so important to uh, be donating what you can. And I truly believe donating actually brings you prosperity and, you know and that's not why you do it but you know there's enough to go around so uh please keep raising money for united spinal but anyway back to maya you know that's something she's dealing with uh, uh, as of a few years ago and this is something you've been dealing with for about 10 years now so talk to me about what actually happened uh yeah 13 years um, 13 okay so like so much of my life was spent being a a, a dumb kid in Alaska. Um, I just, I jumped into so many rivers head first and dived off the back of so many trucks into ravines and uh, just did dumb, dangerous things all the time. Um, this was uh, uh, not a, a story of extreme sports. This was just me being at a friend's barbecue 
and yeah. sitting on a ledge and basically falling into a construction pit that somebody had dug out for a foundation to an addition on their house. Oh my God. Uh oh, you froze. What a horrible moment to freeze as he's telling me this story. Uh, thank you guys for joining Quarantine But Cute. I think we're just having a little bit of an internet issue for the moment. Uh, Eric, come back. There you, are. there you are. Oh my God, it froze right as you told me that moment. At the denouement, at the most dramatic part. Yeah, sorry. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's just uh, like it wasn't it wasn't something that I did uh, out of silliness or irrational irrationability. It was just uh, me literally falling into a poorly dug out hole in the ground. So it's not even a cool story, is what you're saying. <laughs> it's not. No, like I I wish that I was like surfing down a volcano and got bit by like a great white shark or something, but no. It's just, totally. Yeah. Wow. So you had been playing music at that time as well, your whole life, right? Pretty much? Life, yeah, uh, I've been been on the road in some capacity for about 20 years. So I imagine as soon as that happened, it was like, uh, what the fuck? Wait, but I can still use my hands or like, what, I mean, what was like your initial? Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. Um, I didn't know much about spinal cord injuries or paralysis, but I did kind of naively assume that um, everyone with a spinal cord injury had affected hand function. Okay. Um, because I didn't know anybody. Like, right? I didn't have any example to base that off of. Um, I just yeah. knew Drake from Degrassi High, and, like, that was pretty much it. Um, so I was, I was super relieved to find out that I still had hand and arm function. And at the time, uh, my band, The Lashes, uh, at, at that period of time, um, had like a pretty big, uh, stage booked for Bumbershoot. Um, so I got injured, okay. I got injured in May. Bumbershoot usually happens around September and, uh, typically rehab can, uh, for, for a spinal cord injury can be anywhere from like, you know four to eight months, um, kind of depending on the complications that you're dealing with. So I was kind of like right in that window on the early yeah. side of things. Um, but, you know, my management and my band didn't give me the grace or opportunity to be like, hey, guys, let's cancel it. It was just like, yeah, you're going to play the show in September, right? Yeah, it's like you don't feel sorry for yourself. You, you had a support system where you just were like, okay, I'm going to be Beyonce. I'll feel sorry for myself for one day, she says, and then she gets right back up, right? Yeah, you gotta you gotta lemonade that shit. Um, so <laughs> basically, like they did not uh, even give me the option to be like, "Hey, maybe not." Uh, they were just like, "Get him to the stage on September 3rd. And uh, wow, that was that was that. And I I, I think uh, I think that's probably the thing that saved me more than anything. Um, yeah. I, I I also ended up. Um, in the hospital, maybe a month out from my injury, uh, my buddy Shane Tupmark came by. Um, I was in a band with him called Delore for a number of years, and we kind of did some moving and shaking and really fun band and a really nice guy. Um, but essentially, uh, like, got injured in May. He came in to my hospital room in June with a laptop and a little uh, kind of microphone receiver and uh an acoustic guitar and he was like hey can you record a guitar solo for me on this track that i'm working on sure like yeah. um, so like they had like i was still wearing this full back brace and they kind of had to like uh do cloth tape over the front of it so you you couldn't hear the clacking of the acoustic onto my back brace oh I my hadn't, totally. I hadn't sat up at that point like i couldn't uh, raise my head without passing out, but he was just like, I, I don't care. Record this solo. <laughs> Dude, you're a badass. That's just like, let's just give some claps and some hearts to that because so many people, I mean, I've been injured a lot, stupid shit. I'm actually, I have, um, I have a completely numb foot. I have neuropathy on the right side of my right foot that just like happened out of nowhere. I've had multiple spine issues. My mom just went through spinal surgery in her neck so she wouldn't be paralyzed. Um, so I, I, 
not experienced what you've experienced, but I have experienced moments of not being able to walk for several months because of my back issues. And I can't imagine that being my full time life and and just the empathy that you have for others and the and you telling your story is going to help so many people and seeing someone who's a rock star who is up there advocating and rock and rolling there's not many people in wheelchairs in massive bands that are winning grammys that are that are killing it right now and like you should be so proud of yourself and i know that you are you don't need me to tell you that no i'll i'll take it <laughs> <laughs> um you know, one of, one of my one of my kind of like uh, sticky moments is I thought that I was going to be the first guy in a wheelchair to win a Grammy. Um, but you but weren't. It, it turns out that Christopher Reeve won a Grammy for his spoken word uh, delivery of his audiobook. Oh so, man, that Christopher Reeve, Superman! Come on, that that son of a gun. <laughs> gun. So let's talk about superheroes for a minute. Um, when you were growing up, did you have a favorite superhero? Like, who was your dude or girl or whatever? This is going to sound super weird, but I always felt like I related most to the Penguin in Batman Returns. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, Danny DeVito's The Penguin was like, that was it for me. He was absolutely I'm my guy. But I also, I wasn't like a comic book kid or anything like that. I just, uh, I didn't. You know, I lived out in the middle of a forest in rural Alaska. So the idea that there were these like kind of cosmopolitan, sexy Bruce Wayne slash Batman characters in the world seemed like completely foreign and uh, just uh, manufactured to me. Uh, I love that soundtrack forever and ever and ever. And Val Kilmer was my life. Like, what what happened to him? Let's talk about that for a minute. Just kidding. Do, um, no, no. Do you do you want to get into Val Kilmer for a second? Because I mean, let's do, you do know, it. Do you know? <laughs> well, I know that he's kind of like gained a little weight, which I'm not fat shaming, and like disappeared. But like, what happened? He uh, most recently was doing a one man off-Broadway theatrical uh, performance about the life and times of Mark Twain. Really? I swear to Christ. <laughs> I'm like, I live in New York City. I thought I would hear about that. I've actually been on Broadway. That's hilarious. It's, uh, awesome. it's one of those situations where he's like wearing his white linen suit and the lights kind of come on him um, from the side and he turns <laughs> to face the audience and he's like, ah, didn't hear you come in. Thanks for dropping by. I'd like to tell you about my story, the times of March. It's 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 insane, but it also kind of seems good. So <laughs> I, I mean, I'll still go. I would still go, and I would still marry him because The Saint is like my movie. When I don't know what to watch, I put on The Saint or Born Identity. Wow, yeah, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I would I would take uh, Jim Morrison Doors era Val Kilmer over any of them, but yeah, makes sense. He also you got to marry Meg Ryan, so that's, uh, you know, fringe benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a couple fun questions for you, and then I want to get back into talking about United Spinal. Um, you know. So, if you were on a desert island, and you were able to choose one song to play or listen to for the rest of your life, what would it be? Care of Cell 44 by the Zombies. It's, uh, it's side oh. one, track one off of their uh, incredible album, Odyssey and Oracle. And it's uh, just a dreamy kind of 60s psychedelic pop song. Um, but it's, it's told uh, from the perspective of a husband that's waiting for his wife to get out of prison for, uh, for an unspecified crime. So Care of Cell 44 is the letter that the, the man writes to give to the warden to deliver to his beloved in prison um, <gasps> until they can be together again. It's it's absolutely incredible and it's just what? a great melody. And the drum sounds are kick-ass and his voice is sublime. Could you please text me that later? Because I don't know that song. That feels like a deep track and a very specific type of music that I don't know about. I mean, I listen to everything. I was a radio DJ forever. That's how I found out about you guys years and years ago. Um, like 2005, but um, yeah, that sounds real fun. <laughs> they are they are a band that's still on the road. Um, the the singer put out a couple of solo records, but um, they're still out there, still doing it. They were criminally underappreciated um, yeah. in, in in 
pretty much everywhere, including the States, but uh, it's somewhere between the Kinks and the Beatles. The Zombies just have this wonderful little bedrock of uh, happy songs that a lot of people haven't experienced or heard. So yeah, I'll, I'll get it to you. Are you a Spotify person or a Apple Music? I'm actually neither. Let me tell you guys what I am, and I'm gonna get some hearts and hates on this one. I still buy my own music. You'll get all the hearts from me for that, yeah. Because yeah. honestly, I come from a generation, I mean, I'm 37, but we're probably similar in age. I come from a generation where when I went to college, my professor was like, if I ever see or hear of any of you downloading music on Napster, you're out of this program. Because it wasn't legal at the time, right? And people weren't yeah. getting money that they deserved. So for me, someone who has been on the road with larger artists and smaller artists um, in a production aspect and, and a radio DJ and loving the bands and supporting bands like Against Me and, and those are, that's like one of my favorite bands of all time and Metric and you guys, like I buy my damn music. All the albums you guys have, I've purchased. And I think it's so important to do that, especially now in a pandemic. I get people are streaming and that's great, but bands, bands make money when you buy the album. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's true. Um, there's all kinds of numbers and superlatives and, uh, you know, facts that I could, I could send you. But basically, um, you have to stream uh, your song 144,000 times to equal a physical sale. Um, that's kind of the, the metric and the number that uh, the, the powers that be came up with. Um, so I, I, re I resisted it too for a really long time. And I think it was in like 2010 or 2011, um, my buddy Eli Anderson uh, that books Numos uh, just uh, came to a, a backyard barbecue of mine and handed me a hard drive that had 62,000 songs on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I, I like I just plugged it into my laptop and immediately bricked it, you know, just like ruined it because it's like, like it. the literally the dumbest thing I ever did when it comes to music is I had a badass old school iPod and I just like needed money at the time because I was like hustling really hard, you know, and I was just like, got to make money. I think I was in L.A. or wherever. And I sold my iPod and like an idiot, I realized I hadn't backed it up. So whoever bought my iPod at the time got like a hundred thousand songs. Like, what a dumbass! Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I just sometimes I don't think I'm just like give me that money. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> somebody out there with the scroll wheel, eighty gig iPod, like all the single ladies, all the single ladies, oh. all the single ladies. <laughs> yes, all my good music is gone. And like today, I'm on my home pod because I like amp up before shows and listen to music. It's like my therapy. And I was really nervous today because I like wanted to do you right. I think I like stuttered on my intro like five times. I was like, I hope no one notices. But on my on my home pod, I'm like, play so and so, and it's like your music is not there. And I'm like, what? So it's why is she British oh. first of all? What? Why is she British first of all? <laughs> it's a guy. He's Australian. Uh, I'll do that better. Oh, He's like, nice. you don't you don't have songs here. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> your, your party's your party's empty it's got no songies <laughs> sorry sorry your party's full of shit <laughs> all right let's talk about something that isn't shit you guys won a grammy congratulations yeah. i know it's been a minute since it happened and then you know it was so exciting and then the freaking pandemic like a year and a half after that what's going on with music with you guys right now we just snuck right in there to kind of like make a big splash right before uh the world went to shit right um yeah you I did mean, <laughs> what 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 happened basically is due to the success of uh, Feel It Still and how much that song changed my life, um, there's not a whole lot of restrictions in terms of the amount of time that they're giving us to make new music and the amount of money that they're giving us to make new music. Um, I think that in a lot of ways, uh, those kind of restrictions are something that uh, us in the rock and roll world are accustomed to kind of managing through and navigating with yeah um, so when they're just like have all the time and money we're like all right cool have no record ever that doesn't mean that we haven't recorded stuff uh we got a single uh that's coming down the pipeline that we made with weird al um what super exciting i can't really tell you much more than that but that's enough for me babe 
pretty pumped. Um, and we, I mean, we have easily an album worth of music. We just also have like all this time to kind of overthink it. Um, so it's, uh, Deadlines are for a reason. Deadlines are good. And I think, I mean, do you guys create those kind of, you know, it, it, I asked this, I only know you and Zach and Kyle, I've hung out with them several times, but I don't know them in like the business sense or the band flow sense. Like, how do you guys stay on top of it when you, you know, as an, I'm an artist too, things only come up as they feel good to create, right? When someone's telling you, you've got to have a single by this time, that's got to be super treacherous and intense. But now with all the free time, how are, are you guys structuring sessions? What's the deal? Not really. Um, <laughs> and it, it's, it's tricky because those are two very different people. Uh, Zach Brothers and Kyle O'Quinn are very different sort of navigators. Uh, Kyle definitely loves a deadline, loves to crack down on things, loves to get it going. Zach yeah. is, is way more zen which uh, makes for a kind of silly dynamic <laughs> in the yeah. band. It's like, uh, sure. let's hurry up and finish it. Like, let's not even start it. And then somewhere in the middle, uh, totally. the this exists. So um, it's, it's, it's just tricky. At some point, like, we'll, we'll need someone from Atlantic or from management to be like, hey, you guys are done. Like, put out some music. The world needs it. And we'll be like, yeah, of course, here you go. Uh, Must we had, be nice. We had it all along. <laughs> I love it. That's but, so badass. Someone's and, asking, um, it's Anosh98 is asking, will the new album be poppy, feel it still vibes, or continue with the trend of changing up the genre every album? Uh, well, we don't want to make the same record over and over. Um, I think uh, we certainly went to some pretty large stylistic strides on Woodstock. Um, but we wanted to have an album that was named after a music festival to kind of encapsulate the spirit of what right. a music festival is. And I think when people think about Woodstock, the music festival, historically, they kind of envision acoustic guitars and hippies with flowers in their hair and all totally. that kind of stuff. <laughs> but that was a festival that had Santana, Jimi Hendrix, Richie Havens. Led Zeppelin. Uh, uh, yeah, so many incredible heavy hitters. And uh, it, the idea that it was just kind of this folksy acoustic thing is ridiculous. So we wanted it to be a really diverse album and we wanted to work with a lot of producers. Um, everything that we're sort of collecting on this new uh, album seems maybe a little bit more cohesive, um, certainly pop, because we love pop. Um, but um, we, while we worked with a, a number of producers on Woodstock, we've kind of primarily worked with one guy on this. So I think that kind of glues it together yeah. a little bit more cohesively. I love it. Someone's also asking, which this is a great <laughs> question, um, what's the accessibility like on tour? Also, like stage-wise, do you find you have to inform them beforehand. I mean, of course you do, but. It is the, uh, it's like the thing in all caps on our uh, our, our, our uh, hospitality writer, basically. Yep. Like the stage right guitarist is in a wheelchair, please accommodate ramp, blah, blah, blah. Like, um, and it's, it, it's, it's tricky. It's something that uh, when, when, you go back to like what my advocacy looks like. Um, so much of it is just me going out and doing my job and appearing on stages and things like that. So we we have ramps that we we carry under the buses and under the trucks, and uh, we've been able to kind of make everything work um, yeah. more or less. Like I've never had to cancel a show for accessibility issues. Right. Um, but the, the overarching feature on all of that is uh, a stage, by definition, is an elevated area above an audience. So it's, uh, it's going to be an uphill battle, no matter what. Um, but... So there, there, there have been situations where I've been carried through a crowd and then like hopping a gilad up onto the stage. <laughs> if you yeah. know, you know. Yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> I, I, I would say more often than not, it's a, it's a challenge and, and a bit of a struggle. But um, like, 
just kind of my willingness to go through that process um, yeah. mitigates my need to, to, to really speak on the subject. Like just the fact that I'm there uh, doing the only thing that I know how to do um, is enough in a lot of ways. Right. Um, and without um, getting too preachy or, or verbose about it, um, there's typically uh, ADA area um, kind of off the stage for every show that we do. Mm -hmm. And I think when I started playing these shows, they were kind of historically empty. Maybe there'd be like one or two people there. Yeah. They're packed. Wow. They're absolutely packed and slammed. Um, so that's, that's enough for me to just demonstrate that like you can do whatever the hell you want to do. Look at me. <laughs> I'm, I'm an idiot. And I'm up here with a guitar <laughs> playing the tens of thousands of people it's uh i wouldn't say you're an idiot i'd say you're quirky and fun and talented and you just being who you are is like you said it advocates itself and that's very nice to see because like i said as a as a concert goer someone who worked in the music industry forever i didn't see a lot of i didn't see anybody in wheelchairs yeah. not one person rock and rolling in a band like yours or in any band and that's Fucking massive in and of itself. Just like I was watching um, Rising Phoenix last night about oh. the Paralympics. Holy crap. I was just like, ah! you know, like yeah. it just makes you rethink your own life because anytime you say you can't do something, look at someone who's handicapable. I don't like calling it disabled. It may be what it is, but I mean, I feel like it's all about our verbiage. It's about what we are saying, what we're not doing. Those are the things that need to come up. And, and it's just not talked about enough. And thank God for the Paralympics. And thank God for, you know, people like you who are just out there being like, this shit ain't going to get me down. It may get me down every now and then, but like, it's not going to get me down. I'm still going to create. I'm still a whole human. Well, there's, there, I appreciate all that. And thank you for for all those words. I, I, I really do appreciate that. I there's mean a, there, There's a, I know you do, I believe you. Um, there's a couple of uh, forces at work um, in, the, in the disabled community and specifically in uh, spinal cord rehabilitation. Um, you're just, you're, you're, you're put in a situation where you're basically gonna be in a hospital for a few months right. and you're gonna have doctors and nurses and physical therapists and occupational therapists uh, just kind of drive this fear-driven narrative hmm. of, of all the things that are definitely going to kill you <laughs> as you go on through your life. It's like, you know, pressure sores, UTIs, kidneys, liver, like all this kind of stuff. Like you're just kind of like driven oh. with a finger in your chest of all the things that are gonna take you out at some point and you're told that your life expectancy is shorter and you're just kind of like oh. um, coming out of that with PTSD whether you want it or not or whether you realize it's happening to you or not. Um, everything that I do on the road would go against the advice of any sane doctor <laughs> that I would talk to in that system. I can attest like, to that, I've drank with you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I gotta put myself through some crazy scenarios and it's not, just like the rock and roll stuff. It's it's also just uh, like, what do you do if you're a paraplegic that's on a 17 hour flight? You know, like I have to load myself full of Imodium AD and purposely dehydrate myself. Like, oh my because there's no, there's, even, no, there's no bathroom for me, you know? I didn't even think about that. See, listen, do you see why I want to have this conversation? Like I never even sadly thought about that. I'm just being honest and fuck man well i'm in a unique scenario for for a couple of reasons but also um like you know i don't want to be on instagram live talking about my bathroom habits with you but here we are um <laughs> because, you don't have to we can pivot <laughs> no, because they're unique and because they're uh specific like i i i I kind of like forced myself to be comfortable with uh being open in those kinds of conversations so um it's 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 all weird. It's certainly stuff that I never thought about. Um, right. Not really knowing any paraplegics growing up or anyone with my set of circumstances. So I'm I'm very happy to volunteer any information. 
I love it. And hold on, we have someone said, thank you for sharing yourself. Your vulnerability is powerful. It absolutely is. And that's exactly what my show advocates for. And I only want people on that have these amazing stories, not only, but I want people on that can share a story that may help somebody else. Hold on one second. Let's see what this is. <laughs> so Johnny Woodside said, enough about you, Eric. What's Gary up to today? <laughs> I don't know. He's probably out in the backyard eating some raccoon poop. <laughs> That's your cute dog. Oh, my God. What kind of dog is that? He's a, he's a mess. He's a goat. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so both of our dogs are rescues, and they're kind of similar in the fact that they probably both have uh, some wire fox terrier or something like that. Um, but He's like albino looking a bit. So with Gary, it's, it's, it's a little tragic and bear with me. Um, okay. but we're, we're pretty sure uh, he got pulled out of a hoarding situation down in central Oregon. And mm -hmm. he lived with his uh, brothers and one sister in just a trash house. Mm -hmm. And we're pretty sure that he is a product of inbreeding. Aww. So he's he's what they call double Merle. It's like it's a form of albinism that is uh, less genetic and more of a mutation. Um, but he's wonderful and he's very special and he tries really hard. <laughs> um, and uh, like he I mean, he's probably a year and a half um, at this point, but he just learned how to wag his tail. He didn't Aww. know how to do that. Like he just didn't know how to be a dog. And uh, we're pretty sure he never really got out of a crate, you know? Like, we're pretty yeah. sure he was just locked up. So he is uh, discovering his own truth every day. And he's a wonderful little guy. <laughs> I, why can't we have him on with you? Forget about you. Where's Gary, you bitch? Uh, I'd call him, <laughs> but he's deaf. And I don't think he'd come. <laughs> Dude, he's so cool. Well, so far, we've raised uh, $120, six donations for United Spinal Association. Uh, so that's pretty incredible. So anybody just joining uh, United Spinal Association is dedicated to enhancing uh, the quality of life for all people living with spinal cord injuries. It's also Spinal Cord Awareness Month. Um, and they help veterans. They provide support and information to loved ones, care providers, and professionals. So please donate what you can. Uh, when you work with them, how do you advocate with them? They're a remarkable organization. Um, they, uh, they have a publication that's called New Mobility. Um, oh, they're scary. Scary! <laughs> Bring them in! Bye! <laughs> uh, so they, they have a they have a magazine uh, called New Mo New Mobility that they kind of describe as uh, the people magazine for people that can't walk, <laughs> um, but it's like a glossy you know hundred page production. Have you ever made the front cover? I did. Yeah. Yes. I think uh, like right after we did Coachella, so this would have been like I think February twenty nineteen. I was the cover boy. Wait, um, you were there during Baychella. Yeah. If you Whoa. know, you know. Did you watch? We were uh, on the main stage right after Cardi B and right before Beyonce. So that was, you know, 110,000 people. Uh, pretty, no. pretty terrifying. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so what makes you smile? Uh, everything. I, I, I mean... The, I, I will laugh at just the horror of existence. I will, I will find <laughs> humor in literally every single situation that I'm in because if I, if I don't, I'll just go crazy. So uh, everything is really funny to me. <laughs> Do you have a favorite board game? Uh, I used to think that I was really good at Monopoly. And then <laughs> I, got, I got engaged to this girl and I was like, the first time that we cracked it open, I was like, hey, just so you know, I'm pretty ruthless and I'm going to kick your ass in this. And I did for the first game. And then five games in a row, she wiped the floor with me. Congratulations, <laughs> um, by the way, on your engagement. Did you guys meet in the music world? Uh, I've, I've known this one for a very long time. Um, uh, it's Seattle's a pretty small town when yeah. you get to the core of it. Um, so she was I, I, like a, a Vogue cover girl, like world renowned model. Um, yeah, I saw photos. She's stunning. 
yeah, she's insanely gorgeous. Um, makes me look like shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but she she uh, she lived in Europe and Australia and just kind of traveled internationally for a number of years. And our paths just kind of kept almost crossing. Um, but we have known each other for, uh, you know, in excess of 12 years and just wow. like, been in love for almost two years. So oh. we got we got a lot of catching up to do. Um, are you are you guys going to do like a quarantine wedding? What's the deal? <laughs> we are looking at a uh, summer solstice in Alaska. So 62121 wow. is kind of the goal. And we've, uh, we've talked to my favorite hotel up there and kind of like brainstormed. We're basically gonna like reevaluate all this stuff around the holidays. So about New Year's, that'll put us six months out to when we want to get married. Yeah. And we'll kind of take a deep, honest look at what uh, air travel and society looks like. Because yeah. obviously, like, I don't want to put any of my family or friends in a situation that would be uh, potentially dangerous or or weird. Uh, so yeah, uh, around New Year's, we're going to take a deep, honest look at it. And the contingency plan as it stands right now is a backyard wedding here in my house. I love um, it. But the, the dream goal wedding is a big kind of destination thing up in Anchorage. And, Ooh, yeah. And there's anything that can exist in between, too. Uh, so we'll, 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 we'll let you know. Okay, so when you are on um, the road, what is the one thing you crave food-wise that's back at home? Uh, you're, you're familiar enough with Seattle that you might get some niche places, right? Yeah, I mean, a few. I've been there a bunch, but we'll see. Go ahead, test me. There is Azelle's <laughs> fried chicken, which is... I know uh, it. Next level, extraordinary, buttery fried chicken. And there is uh, just a, a Dick's cheeseburger. Um, I love so that it's called, it's called Dick's. It is. And uh, you just happened. go there, you get a bag of Dick's. And uh, that's that. <laughs> I said something I've been lacking in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Just a bag of dicks. Everyone I'm can... working on my comedy. Everyone could use a bag of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, okay. As far as you guys getting back together to hang out, like it, everybody's all over between Portland and Alaska. Are you guys able to have like a mass get together as the band? I mean, I know you said you've been recording here and there and you have something coming up with Weird Al that you can't talk about, but we're very excited for. But like how often do you guys get to hang? Cause man, I've been lonely as book. <laughs> we've, we've done a couple of things. And honestly, I'm kind of the one outlier. The rest of the guys are all, uh, Portland residents, and I'm the one kind of straggler that's up here in Seattle. Um, but we <laughs> like, I've had us. enough of you. What's that? Yeah, but you're like, I've had enough of you. I need my space. No, Seattle's just always been so good to me, and uh, I, I moved here the, the second that I graduated high school, basically, and uh, opened up successful businesses, and uh, just found myself in situations with bands that got signed to labels, and uh, this this city has just been remarkable and spectacular to me, so I can't turn my back on it. Um, I love it. As, as much as I love Portland. Um, it's still, you know, it's a three-hour drive I can manage. Um, Great. But, uh, yeah, we just put out a thing that we did with Tito's Vodka um, where we had kind of resisted the, the live stream virtual concert thing yeah. that I, I saw so many other bands doing. Um, just because they never looked or sounded great, you know? Right. Like, at, 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 at best, a lot of these virtual hangs can tend to look like a, like ISIS hostage footage, you know? Oh it's, just like, <laughs> it's just a cell phone in your face with bad lighting and terrible. Really bad backgrounds, like, like red cloth. Yeah, yeah. So we didn't, we didn't want to do that to our brand and uh, our identity, but we just uh, did a, a beautiful 40 minute concert up on the top of Mount Hood um, at Timberline Lodge. So if you can picture the, the opening of The Shining at the Overlook Hotel. Yeah, that's um, beautiful. Before it gets that, that parking lot. So with wow. the mountain in the background and the lodge and uh, yeah, just a, a really special cool show that we did with a, 
a number of 4K HD cameras and an aerial drone. So it, it came off pretty well. It was the first time that we had like really uh, gotten instruments back into our hands and performed as a group. And I didn't know how badly we needed it until we were in the middle of doing it. Um, so pretty proud of that. Um, we recorded footage for a music video. I don't know if that's going to come out anytime soon, but like it's, it's tricky. Um, and there's kind of this other element where uh, because we live in different cities that have different, you know, spike points in terms of uh, this whole yeah. COVID nonsense, um, you know, Seattle kind of led the way in that. Yeah, uh, they do. Yeah, where we just had that nursing home that went um, so, psycho. I actually was scheduled to be in Seattle. I'm also an event coordinator, or, um, event producer. Um, I was scheduled to be there like March 27th, and then everything the shit hit the fan. And I feel like if the rest of the country followed suit to Seattle, we wouldn't be sitting here having, you know, this stuff happen. I mean, a lot of amazing things have happened through quarantine and COVID. You know, it, it's sad that so many people have lost their lives, obviously, and tragic and terrible. And our whole political system is what it is. And everybody get out and vote. <laughs> yep. No uh -huh. Around the corner. <laughs> exactly. But, um, yeah, it's a wild world and we just have to keep going. And, and someone said to me the other day, you need to have a theme for your show. And, and I got this when I basically couldn't walk for a couple months um, in December. Last year, people had to physically help me walk through the streets of Costa Rica where I went to go heal. And I had gotten this right before the, uh, my injury happened. I'm walking better now, but it says keep going. And oh, girl. Wait, I know, I know that company. I, yeah, my uh, intent. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know uh, one of the co-founders. She she hooked me up with a great gift package um, full of all of my intents. I love them, and and I she, think that that's the theme of the show and all of our lives right now. Just like keep going. You're gonna have good days. You're gonna have bad days. Whatever your situation is, and and that's why quarantine but cute was created to just give a little boost not only <laughs> to other people but it gives me a. a you know, what is it, endorphin, you know? Yeah. Or cortisol, what is it? Of course, you got, cortisol, uh, the stress hormone? <laughs> uh, you got your dopamine. Dopamine. And, yeah, so I'm acutely aware of my dopamine reward pathways. I try and keep them all on track as much as I can, but. You're very censored and, and you've obviously been through a lot, but you also live a really extraordinary life and that's so exciting. And you, you are an advocate and you're a hero to a lot of people. And so what do you have to say to the young kids who are also just <laughs> But want to get into music just do it that's it yeah it's it's that simple um yeah. i am too old and too slow to like go back to school or learn any new <laughs> skills i just i just got to doing the thing that i've been doing for years and years and um like now i'm kind of faced with this new challenge of figuring out how to adapt in a world uh where getting large crowds of people together to listen to my music is uh irresponsible so yeah. uh just still figuring out different ways to create um i i got myself a drum set and a bunch of keyboards and i'm trying right. to learn you know new skills in the music world and be more of a multi-instrumentalist but just do what you want to do it's it's that simple you know I love it. it's, uh, <laughs> Someone just said, just do it, Nike by Eric Hawk. There you go. I mean, it's so weird. We, we, we probably played about 40 shows in 2020. Um, we were touring right up to the time that it became apparent that we shouldn't be touring. And uh, on, I think it was March 17th, I had my suitcase packed and a passport in my hand, and we were about to do a Latin American tour that was going to take us through April. And it was, I, I was checked into my flight. I got upgraded to first class. It was a wonderful thing. And the world just started catching on fire. And uh, it wasn't until about, I think it was that morning. Like, I think I was supposed to fly out at 4 p.m. And at 9 a.m., uh, our manager got us on a, a group call and was like, hey, I want to know what you guys think about this. Like, uh, you know, what are your hesitations and what are your reservations within this? And 
we we talked honestly about it and i was like i don't really want to get uh quarantined in uh guadalajara like yeah. i don't want to get stuck in mexico yeah um even though i do want to get stuck in mexico my but... friend got stuck there for three months and got engaged there they live wow. in wow um but yeah like we we were playing shows in march and it wasn't until that night before that uh we kind of took an honest look at our situation and we yeah. were like, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that because you guys obviously gather hundreds of thousands of people and your shows are epic and I've been to so many and you guys have invited me and put me on the list over the years, all from an interview back six years ago with John and, um, and, and Zach and you're such a loving band and a true, true, gift to the world your music is so inspiring and it lifts me up and um i'm just so happy that you were able to come on today and talk to us and i really appreciate your journey and sharing that and you know i just think you're fantastic so thank you for being here and uh i know you're very busy even in quarantine You've got stuff to do we can look forward to the weird owl collaboration we can we can do that and hopefully more music down the pipeline um as it as it comes out but thank you so much for your presence and your words um you're always invited you're always on the list so that's so sweet thank you so much give gary our love that's all we really care about at the end of this conversation is that he knows that we love him um you guys are all right but <laughs> we, we do it all for gary <laughs> i love it it's all for gary baby and for the united spinal association we raised 130 dollars. i love it thank you guys for, for, yes. for yeah some money out there i mean i'd like to have three more zeros on it but you know any 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 money helps and and you guys doing your part out there even through all of this stay strong keep going keep buying portugal to man the records and keep watching quarantine but cute always forever keep keep it tuned all uh, right same bad time same bad channel <laughs> yeah valcomer forever bitches uh, who was uh, just really quickly was it George Clooney, where the bat suit had like nipples in it. Do you remember that? I do, but I forgot George Clooney was a Batman. Until right now, you got. I mean, Adam West, Michael Keaton, uh, Val Kilmer, and Christian Bale. Like, and it's, now Pattinson, which is that's uh, so weird to me. Uh, uh, it's a, we could we could do a whole separate podcast about my reservations with that. I can't even, I was trying to show you, I have this new uh, filter that makes my eyes like White Walker vampire mode, but it didn't happen fast enough, so whatever. Yeah. It's live TV, folks. I'm my own producer, director, host, creator. We got a, a mixed bag of technology here, so exactly. we'll take what we can get. Uh, send, me, send me a snap of it later. I will. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Eric. You're rad. I love that we were able to chat today, and everybody out there, keep going. We love you. Ciao. Thanks for the love. Thanks for the money. Take care. Bye. Bye.